Hello and welcome to the No Expectations Video Store Podcast. I'm Ben. And I'm James. I'm Max. And today we're talking about the 1989 Sleeper. I don't know if you'd even call it a cult classic or a hit or just kind of a forgotten gem, but we're talking about 1989's The Punisher starring Dolph Lundgren and Lou Gossett Jr. Yeah, I only know Dolph Lundgren. I didn't know the rest of the cast. Who was this directed by? Uh, Max? We have? You gotta pull up that young guy. Right, young M. Okay. Okay, we got I'm DB up. Oh yeah, we got Mark Goldblatt, writer Boaz Yakin. What a what a name! What a name! Um, of course Dolph Lundgren, Louis Luis Gossett Jr. So Mark Goldblatt was the director. Yeah, Mark Goldblatt. Mark director. Goldblatt. 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 What else did Mark Goldblatt do? Just let's out of curiosity. See, let's let's go down the rabbit hole. What a handsome fella. There he is, sexy boy. Oh, Judgment Day. Known for True Lies. True Lies. Editor. 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 Okay. editor, editor, editor. We'll go down to his... Uh, he worked on Terminator 2 as an editor, too. That's pretty badass. He's a... Well-rounded gent. Man, he's an editor. What director, about his... Uh, three directors right there. Previous. Click on that. The Punisher. Dead Heat. Eerie, Heat. Indiana, and Dead Heat. What is Dead Heat? I'm thinking of Red Heat. Yeah. Sure. I don't know. Eerie, Indiana got a 8.2 stars. Interesting. But yeah, as far as uh, Punisher goes, let's uh, let's talk about it. Well, one thing that's kind of fun about this, check this. Uh, I have one of these limited edition unfazed review calendars, and um, I think I think there might be a couple still available on the Redbubble store. Uh, let's see that on the close. Don't quote me on that, but anyway, check it out. We weren't even planning on this, but this month is hyper focused on the Punisher because we did an unfazed gaming review of it. And uh, yeah, just a happy accident, just a little coincidence. But yeah, check it out. Oh, Plug for game. the merch. Go for the merch. I'm gonna put this back up on the wall. <laughs> it goes back. Yeah, it's a wall. great movie. I mean, um, I really enjoyed it. Thanks. I I really liked it too. I mean, let's let's dive in. Let's talk about the Punisher. Yeah, being a huge huge Punisher fan, like he's one of my favorite heroes, or arguably anti heroes. Um, I am a huge Thomas Jane fan. Personally, you guys know Thomas Jane is like my Punisher. He's my favorite. Yeah, that's that's my. I'm gonna stop you there. He's our Punisher. Oh, thank you. Yes, he is our Punisher. He's our Punisher. So I'm a huge Thomas Jane fan. A big part of that too was the video game for PS2. He did the voice for it. The 2004 movie with Travolta. I thoroughly enjoyed it. My favorite mm-hmm. Punisher movie. So it's kind of a surprise that it took me so long to watch the Dolph Lundgren Punisher. I just. I think in the back of my mind, I always thought, oh, it's not going to be very good. I, I just kind of dismissed it as just kind of a forgotten B movie. And mm-hmm. there's a, I thought there's a reason we haven't watched it. It's probably like a, you know, a low grade Steven Seagal piece of junk or something. Well, you had mentioned that it hadn't hit theaters. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a straight to TV moment. Straight to video. Yeah. Straight to video. Because I want to say it's straight to TV for, because um, what you see in the violence and everything. It's definitely rated R. Yeah. Straight to um, VHS. Dude. I didn't even know this existed until like a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. So I always knew. I thought Thomas Jane was the only first Punisher movie. And I think you're the one that told me like, oh, there was a Dolph Lundgren one. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, we do love Dolph Lundgren. Yeah, he's great. And, um, I thought, like you said, it looked kind of silly just looking at it. Like didn't like interest me at all. Yeah. But I highly actually enjoyed this movie. I really enjoyed it too. I Like I said, I'm, I'm sad in a way that it took me so long to watch this. Because I think as a kid, I would have watched the heck out of this. Mm-hmm. If we would have had this on VHS or something, like I would have definitely watched it. But uh, I think a lot of people probably missed out on it because it didn't have a proper theatrical release. I think it got kind of swept under the rug and forgotten. And also a thing is 1989, Batman. Batman came. Yeah. I'm Batman. 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 So Batman. it was really overshadowed. You had a bunch of other action movies. You had one of the biggest superhero movies of all time and definitely at least for that decade. And uh, yeah, so this was kind of a forgotten gem. But that being said, as a Punisher fan, as a Dolph Lundgren you know, fan – this was great. Like I loved it. And I'm going to say this is my second favorite Punisher movie behind the Thomas Jane Punisher. Like I really enjoyed it. And I think we got robbed of not getting a sequel or a trilogy of this one. I think it would have been this one. And there were, there were talks of him doing it in 91 of doing a sequel, but the uh, production company like went bankrupt. Really? So, yeah. That's surprising. I mean, it, it, I think it did have like a good like production for it. Like it seemed like a good budget for it. The it looked it looked nice. Yeah. Yeah. Like I would say because I mean like where the locations were too. Also, they have like probably like four locations throughout Ooh, that movie. Was this set in uh, New York, Chicago? I think it's it New York. City, New York. I don't know. I don't know if they even said or was it. I think it's just this maybe a, city. a nondescript city. Yeah, I don't know. He but said no. there was a mention of Batman at one point. Maybe it takes place in. Uh... Let's not go. 
<laughs> different universe. Different man. universe. Well, no, Carnival he, he mentioned, he's like, who sent you? He's like, Batman. Do you remember that part? I don't remember. I don't, actually. <laughs> Maybe I was a little too high. I don't know. Who sent you? Batman. <laughs> Things that I notice. Uh, but, yeah, this one had a lot of strengths, though. Like, I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, very clean looking film. It was shot very nicely. It had a good cast. Um, I do feel if I had to dish any criticism on it, I do feel it was kind of lacking a good main villain a little bit. I would agree. I, I well, there was like two of them, right? Yeah, you had the the Asian uh, like, yakuza uh, leader, yakuza leader, and then the, and then you had the the guy that was like uh, the crime boss. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I think I mentioned that just, uh, also. I was like, well, finally, it's. At least it's Yakuza. We always get like cartel or yeah, like yeah. Russian or like, you know, German. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of cool to see Yakuza I, in a movie. Yeah, like, that was cool. get that often in films. Yeah, I mean, it was yeah. kind of the end of the Cold War. So like most of the villains before this were all, mm-hmm. um, I mean, in the 80s, a lot of communist movies. Yeah. Out, you yeah. Know, anti-communist propaganda. All the villains were Russian. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it was super refreshing, but it was kind of interesting seeing a movie like this and not seeing like jigsaw or bullseye or someone like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was like a, there, yeah. a, cl- a clear bad guy. This was kind of a, uh, kind of like your typical action movie of the time, like a Chuck Norris or a Van Damme or a Stallone where it's kind of like mm-hmm. just going after a bunch of bad guys, which was cool. And it worked. It, it, kind, work. it kind of reminded me of uh, the comics of that era of the Punisher. It was a very true Punisher um, comet uh, comic accurate interpretation well i will say i don't know about the because we watched the i think we all watched the unrated cut right yes but yeah, I, don't the, the I don't know if the word. intros are different from um the like it's the beginning of the movie but like the beginning of the movie just felt like a comic book it just like had slides of mm-hmm. pictures and stuff of like what happened to him and then what he's doing and so i thought it was really cool to see like a just like comic book on screen even for the 80s you know like yeah one thing a lot of people criticize this movie on was that you don't actually see a skull on his chest at any point. Yeah. But I didn't mind it. I think it worked. I think it made it a little more rooted in the real world. And maybe they had some issues with not getting the skull on there because of, I don't know, copyright Probably or something. But I think it was still produced by Stan Lee. But yeah, that doesn't make sense because he still called Frank Castle. Yeah. So I don't know what their choice was, but it worked. It still worked. I think it would have been cool if, he if they would have had the skull on the chest, but... Without it there, I still enjoyed it. Like it we, didn't, it didn't take away from my, my skull. My just, argument is that uh, it felt more realistic. Yeah, you know, it yeah. felt like a re- he's a real vigilante cop. Exactly. I would yeah. say it felt real, but there was a lot of guns at him. He probably could have died multiple times. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> Star Trooper aim. Yeah, but uh, that being said, I, I loved it. This is my second favorite Punisher movie. It really saddens me that we didn't get more because, like, that's one thing I wanted to talk about. If they did continue on. It would have been cool to see like Punisher Warzone comics kind of explored. It would have been cool to maybe do a Punisher 2047. Yeah. Something in the future would be sick. Yeah. Those were cool. I remember, remember those comic books where it was like mm-hmm. ultimate punishment and he's like in the future, but they could have done a lot. And this was kind of like cartoony and over the top and it just, it just worked this, this scene. I don't know if you can see what's on Max's computer right now, Is but the fun house one, the fun house scene was one of my favorite sequences of the, the same thing. movie. It was so badass. It was so comic booky. <laughs> It was like he rolls in on his motorcycle, Dude, like so, all, so cool. All the thugs sliding down, yeah, like the slide from the carnival and everything, shooting. Every, that was that was badass. It was badass, yeah. So that sequence I loved. I would say my top three sequences were the carnival scene. I would say the scene where he's, uh, spoiler alert, being tortured and he's like being like stretched yeah. on a stretcher, <laughs> yeah. and then we get to see the Punisher actually do some punishing, which was pretty cool. There wasn't, there, I wish there was a bit more of that. I wish we would have had a few more like special kills, you know, but it's cool that they actually showed it. I liked, um, it's like the carnival scene as well. Um, him riding his motorcycle. I love those scenes too. too. Just going down the, like, I guess he lived in the sewer, right? Yeah. And the third scene also in the sewer is just, you get to see him from the back, you know, sweaty. Uh, I love that part. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just, it's, it's a fun little snippet to see Dolph Lundgren's ass in there randomly. But... We learned something new about James tonight, folks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that wasn't really my favorite scene. No, I'm teasing. But he, uh, as far as that was, that was pretty hot. It was pretty hot. Yeah, as far as uh, next to some candles. Yeah, it was pretty hot. As far as the third, as far as the third favorite sequence, ooh, probably just that ending battle where it's just him against the yakuza and it's just the freaking yeah, bloodbath. Uh, say that's actually yeah, yeah, that was pretty sick. And that's it. That's three. I was gonna say the intro was pretty sick too, but now I'm just getting to the point where I just like the whole movie, mm-hmm. you know. But uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. And you don't really see Punisher on motorcycle very much in other incarnations. No. Did they even do that in the John Bernthal? Does he have a motorcycle? I don't 
see, I never watched most of it. I only watched the probably like the first season or two. Uh, I know I watched the with Daredevil. He's really cool. I liked I liked him in that like the Daredevil show. He was really badass in there. The whole hallway setting in the prisons. Yeah, Max, did you watch any of that with John Bernthal Punisher? Um, I I I haven't sadly. No. It was too slow paced for me. Yeah. I know it picks up. I know. It's, yeah. I know it's supposed to be good, but I was like. I, I just think I'm just a purist with like Thomas Shane and probably now with Dolph Lundgren because I I think they're great. They are great, yeah. No, I agree. Uh, I will say the Daredevil season with Punisher I really enjoyed. I think that was season two of Daredevil. Yeah, I think so. Um, really good, very well done. Huge fan of that. But yeah, I, I tried watching the first solo season of Punisher and it was okay, but I found myself just fast forwarding to the action scene. I did too. And I just didn't really get that into it. So no offense to John Bernthal. I don't want him to kick my ass. But um, I, he's just not my Punisher. I, I just don't connect with him as the character. And uh, I know a lot of people, you know, he's their favorite Punisher. That's cool, you know, to each their own. But for me, it's Thomas Jane, Dolph, and then I would say probably Ray Stevens. Or is it Ray Stevenson? I think it's Ray Stevenson. Ray Stevenson? No, Ray Stevens. I think it's Ray Stevens. Ray, Ray Stevens. And then I would say John Bernthal as far as the the interpretations go. Um, but uh, the opposite of that. You would think Bernthal over Ray Stevens? Ray Stevens, yeah. You think Ray Stevens last? Yeah, I mean, it's I. I have to watch that film again. I just know it's just literally just shootouts and blood. And yeah, I it was. I was not a fan of it at all. And it's like I know he looked like the Punisher, but that movie I tried getting through it recently, and I was like, dude, I just don't care. It's just mm-hmm. so much blood and gore, and it's like has no story. You know, everyone's like, well, it's like the comics. I'm like, well, the comics still have stories. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, but um, ah, shit. You know what? I might agree with you. I might put Ray Stevens last. May he rest in peace. No disrespect. I mean, to there's him. still more story with John Berthold. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. You. You know what? Yeah, I'll agree with you. I'll put Stevens last, and then we'll do. Burn Thal, but Jane and Dolph are uh, my boys. They're my boys. Well, uh, around this time, the, there was a growing popularity of bringing these comic books into the movies, right? So yeah. I think before this, Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns came out. Uh, Watchmen was a popular comic book, mm-hmm. and The Punisher. So I think this, you know, it's sad that it didn't see the movie, the the theaters. I mean, for me, that's a really weird choice. Honestly, it's a really weird choice. I wonder if had they waited until after Batman came out and released it like six months later, if everyone would have been like, oh, hell yeah, Punisher. let's go see the Punisher. Like, let's see what no, you're doing. Because, all right, Dolph Lundgren, I still don't think he was that as like a popular movie star. He was he was big because of Rocky. That was it, though, right? Like, and that was of anything else with him in really besides Expendables and the mm, that's the thousand. Uh, Time Cop wasn't in time, but that was after. Yeah, I, don't know. I think that was after. He'd, he'd done a lot of like B movies, kind of like Chuck Norris, but I don't think yeah. he was even as much of a box office draw as in, Chuck. In here, he barely spoke, which was, I like that. Yeah. I, mean, I like yeah. just for the Punisher in general. It's one of the few leading role movies I can think I've ever seen with Dolph Lundgren. Yeah. Like, I can't really think of any others where he's the leading man. He looks good in there. As a, I mean, I think yeah. you said this too. The only thing that looked fake was his beard, right? It looked like yeah. it was just makeup. His stubble looked like makeup yeah. put on. But I think that's because he's naturally blonde. Yeah. So he probably has very light facial hair. So I get that. But um, yeah, yeah. As far as like, you know, praise for this movie, like I can't say enough good things about it. Like it, it felt perfect to the era, but also there were elements of it that looked really modern. Like when I was looking at it, I don't know if it was just because it was such a clear mm-hmm. copy of the movie I was watching, but it looked like it could have been made like in the early 2000s even. I was like, wow, this is really, this really holds up nicely. You know, my favorite part would definitely be the part where he, he, he drives a little RC car with the liquor bottle. Yeah. Oh yeah. But, you know, I'm into RC cars and stuff. Funny, so. Need me some of that. But yeah, we should also talk about this copy. Um, this is one that I, I found online and I just thought it looked so cool. And apparently it's really hard to get. This is, I believe from Australia and I'll let you guys talk about it a little bit, but the different editions that are on it. Yeah. There's what, I think there's three editions on this movie. I only watched the unrated. I mean, there's a theatrical, unrated in the work print which i'm really interested in watching the work print because i went and like skipped a few scenes in there there's i think there's like 77 scenes that are different when i looked wow. it up and what's crazy about it it goes sorry it like dives in more of him being a dad it shows him like with his kids um which is different from the thomas jane one i think he had a son and here he has yeah. uh two two little girls <clears throat> So like it shows like him uh, and, and his wife laying in bed and they're just like cuddling and then like you just see like two like Uzis on the screen facing uh, him and his wife and he's like no no please and then it goes to his kids and it's just Damn. squirt guns and everything you see him pl- being playful being a playful dad yeah and then also like I didn't I didn't get this vibe from the unrated cut I didn't know the detective knew 
uh, Frank Castle until later in the movie, like they were best friends. Yeah. And here in the work print version, it shows them like going to a party together and showing that they were partners and stuff. Yeah, Interesting. So it's they it, were lovers. Like, why would they cut so much of it? Well, those of you who don't know what a uh, work print is it's sort of like in the early editing stage it's incomplete sometimes they don't have all the special effects and soundtracks included uh it's for internal use Mm -hmm. and then it gets turned into like the director's cut and uh, and so on and so forth yeah Yeah, and a lot of times sorry go ahead i'm sorry the work print of it like if you go on the special features, it it looks bad. Yeah, low it quality. Fun to watch just to know to see all the behind the scenes. It's so weird to me that the creative forces behind these movies, like the directors, the producers, the editors, when they do release like, you know, even DVD cuts of this or theatrical, you know, at home versions of this, that they're not like, hey, while well, we still have this footage, why don't we clean it up? Mm-hmm. It's so weird that so many movies are like that, where it's like this high definition movie, and then like on the unrated cut, you see like you know a, a shot of a guy getting shot in the head or someone getting stabbed, and it looks like this low grainy yeah, VHS quality, funny. and then it goes back to like 1080p, and you're just like, <laughs> wait a minute, what? It's just weird to me that like I know if I was a director back then, I would really fight to have everything crystal clear now, mm-hmm. but whatever. well, that costs money. <clears throat> it does cost money, but it's just like it's your it's your movie, it's it's your legacy, you know? Yeah, we'll I don't know. Um, I also forgot to touch on the so in the unrated cut showing how his family dies. It was like really fast, wasn't it? Like, do you remember like just a car explosion? Yeah, like he was like a dreaming. Yeah, it was super fast. So it shows him and his like partner driving down the road, talking and everything, mm-hmm. and then his wife getting in the car, laughing and stuff, and then it like ex- explodes in front of them. Damn. Instead of just like being a weird dream sequence, it was a really like awful way to like show in the unrated cut. I didn't like the way that his family died in the unrated cut. So I, I'm. I was, a lot of I was a little confused about scenes. that. Yeah, it was kind of cool. The surprise of Lou Gossett Jr.'s character, the detective, you know, discovering that he knew Frank Castle. That was pretty cool, but it didn't have as much impact. Like it would have been it would have been cool if they would have kept I, that. I, yeah, I needed a backstory for me. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. There's also another scene where his wife gets shot and his kids get kidnapped. Really? Yeah. Oh, or maybe I'm just confused. I'll have to <laughs> have to rewatch it. The I'll be happy to watch it, rewatch it. So yeah, I think a perfect time for a Dolph Lundgren trilogy would have been. Excuse me, I just belched up Taco Bell. <laughs> a perfect time would have been um, eighty nine, obviously for the first one. Sequel would have been like early nineteen ninety two, and then so it wouldn't have to go up against Batman Returns because we know there's so many heavy hitters in the nineties. And then I think if we did a third Dolph Lundgren one, I think 1996 would have been like a sweet spot. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't have it would have been after Batman Forever. Wouldn't have been a lot of superhero competition. Uh, as far as Thomas Jane goes, 2004 was the first one. I would say like 2007 for a second Punisher, and then like a little after Dirty Laundry, the short film. Which if you guys are Punisher fans, make sure you watch that. It's freaking fantastic. When was- What's Dirty Laundry have to do with? Uh- so Dirty Laundry was a short yeah. film produced by thomas jane himself he yes. he independently produced it because he was uh championing or campaigning himself to be the punisher again because they hadn't done a movie at that point in eight years and he's like yo marvel like i'm still interested in being frank castle i'm still interested in being the punisher and they just were not having it they were not throwing him a bone they weren't giving him the opportunity so he was like well fuck it i'm gonna do one myself and so he got a little team together he funded it himself he got ron perlman on who's his buddy and they did like this 10 to 12 minute short film yeah. and it turned out really good. It's really graphic. It's really violent. No, and it um, yeah, it's badass. I highly recommend it. And uh, that would have been a perfect time. Like right after that, like late 2012 into 2013, that would have been a perfect time for a third Thomas Jane Punisher. Like an older Punisher. Yeah. But unfortunately with both these, with Dolph and with actually with all of them, with Dolph, with Thomas Jane and with Ray Stevens uh, or Stevenson, I'm sorry. Uh, they all just got one shot at it, which is crazy. I wish they would have like had a little more faith in the character and been like, it's just weird. They have enough faith in them to be like, well, yeah, we have hundreds of thousands, possibly millions of fans who love the comics. It's like, we're invested enough to have a video game, but it's like, and they did a bunch of video games through the nineties. There's like Sega games and Nintendo games and stuff. And it's just weird that they're like, eh, we're not going to pull the trigger on another movie. Like what the fuck? Take a risk. Come on. It's not like it's that big of a risk either. It's a popular character. It is. You know? I would have loved to have seen a Blade and Dolph Lundgren Punisher team up. Because they're in the video game together, right? Uh, Blade does not appear, no. Oh, gosh. That would have been a great cameo, though. Black Actually, appear, yeah, no, Bla- Black in, the, in the video game, if you guys haven't played it, check out the Unfazed Gaming video we did on it. 
Um, one of my favorite video games ever. There's cameos from Iron Man. There's cameo from Black Widow. There's cameo from Nick Fury. Mm -hmm. And there's a cameo from... Oh, who else? Kingpin, obviously. But he's like more of a main villain. Um, there's no Spidey. Maybe that's it. I, I want to say there's some kind of Daredevil reference in there, too. I don't know. It's been a minute. But, uh, yeah. Honestly, a Blade team-up would have been cool with Thomas Jane. Yeah. That would have been a little closer, I think. I think so. Yeah. Um, what were you going to say, though? Uh, I don't remember. I know Thomas Jane was... Uh, so, I think it was the end of Spider-Man 2. At the very end of the movie, they uh, hinted that there's uh, Punishers in the background. Oh, yeah. And they were getting it ready for Thomas Jane's also. They yeah. used the stunt double of mm. Thomas Jane to be the Punisher. Wow. That, so they were I building will, a universe, kind of. That, w that was my multiverse, man. Thomas Jane Punisher, Toby Spidey, Hugh Jackman, James Marsden. Yeah, yeah X-Men 1 and 2, because then X-Men kind of gets a little crazy after that. I agree. I agree. But now, if Thomas Jane were to come back at the age he's at now, he's not that old. He's like mid-50s, I think, early 50s. Like, if he came back, I'd be so freaking stoked. It would be like a Logan movie for me. I think. Yeah, if it Something came like back that. and it's like Punisher when he's like older and haggard and been through some shit... And Thomas Jane really got back into working out again. I think, dude, he could, he could, he could definitely pull off one more. Yeah, for sure. I think so too. I mean, look at Hugh, you know. But anyway, you guys want to do? You got, do you want to continue with Punisher and do ratings? Or you want to jump into entertainment news? I think we should probably do our ratings and our Let's alternate do our ratings castings and alternate castings for sure. Okay, well, I'll let you kick it off. Ratings. Uh, gosh, I really enjoy this one. I don't think it's better than the Thomas Jane one. I think it's it's up there though. I agree. Um, I'll give it a four. I, I really enjoyed it, and I actually yeah, – because I want to go back and watch it. I want to watch all the different editions. I'm going to see the yeah. what's different from uh, um, each one of them. I agree. The action's good. Uh, Dolph Lundgren was great. Mm -hmm. The villains were mediocre, but yeah. um, the fight scenes made up for it. Yeah. Yeah, four stars for this film. I, yeah, recommend. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you too. This is a hard four out of five, and I mean that in the most complimentary way. It's like a, it's like a, a perfect four-star film. Yeah. I don't go higher because everything you talked about, I, I think – Maybe Dolph wasn't the best cast Punisher, but he did a very good job with what he had to work with. And um, I think there could have been a little more torturing, like a little more punishment. Yeah, I agree. And I do think it needed a main villain that was like really like Jigsaw type guy um, or, or Howard Saint like in the Thomas Jane Punisher. But that being said, I already want to watch it again. I watched it a week ago and I'm already ready to rewatch it. So uh, as time goes on, my rating might go up. That might become like a 4.2 or 4.4 even. But for now, I'm just going to say it's a consistent four out of five. It was really good. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think we were robbed of not getting a trilogy of Dolph and not getting a Thomas Jane Dolph. trilogy. Yeah. But uh, Max, what did you think? I'm going to give it a solid four out of five. Wow. I look mean, at us all I, in agreement. I don't even like, I don't really like superhero movies. Mm -hmm. It didn't really overly, uh, it wasn't overly a superhero movie. I yeah. get it when it just leans into the IP and, you know big punisher logo and whatever like it doesn't feel realistic to me this felt like rooted in reality and something that i mean we're all losing faith in in the law and the judicial system and i mean i think all of us kind of want to be a, a vigilante oh, in for sure. i mean nowadays dude 100 percent, yeah some of those themes are always uh applicable like whether it's 2024 or whether it's 1989 like people yeah, they get fed up and they can only get pushed so far, you know? We're but, doing alternate casting? Hell yeah. You want to kick off alternate casting or did you do it? Uh, yeah, I'll do it. Okay, sweet. So for Frank Castle, Punisher, I thought maybe Mel Gibson, Bruce Willis, Kurt Russell, Ooh. all would have been good choices. Kurt Russell, solid. Solid. Yeah, solid. solid. Jake Berkowitz, the police partner. Mm -hmm. uh, Gene Hackman. Oh, sick. Harvey Keitel. I'm, good. I don't good. know if I'm saying his name right. Yeah, Harvey Keitel. And then the Yakuza leader, uh, Lady Tanaka, uh, Lucy Liu. I mean, come on. Hottie. Or Joan Chen. Yeah. Um, I want to eat her egg rolls. So the female cop, I thought Sigourney Weaver would have been a good cast. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love Sigourney. I mean, I think I end up choosing her for a lot of these, but I love Sigourney. I mean, love Sigourney. She, she had short she, hair. It was just. She, she, I mean, she dime. was like the 80s action star back then. Yeah, she was. She was perfect. And then the mafia boss, I thought uh, 
I don't know, Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, something like that. You did more casting than I did, bro. I only yeah, did uh, I only did Dolph and I did the detective. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but those were solid. I I, good. I confirm those. Those are good. I mean, ones. I didn't really think too much about it. I just thought the first thing that popped into my head. Mm. You really went for it. I'm proud of you. Yeah. You did a good job. I did that for you. Bro. That's how you know Max actually liked the movie That's too. True. The fact that he actually cared enough <laughs> to do all those. That means he was a fan of The Punisher. That was beautiful. Yeah. Um, the highest score I've ever given. I think so. Well, aside from Mosquito Coast, which we all love. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, all right. So I'm going to say Punisher 89, Frank Castle, Dolph Lundgren. I picked Michael Bean from Terminator I almost did. and Tombstone. Michael Bean. Uh, I think he's way underrated. Love him as an actor. Uh, I also picked Mel Gibson. I think Mel Gibson would have been very solid in that era. Very, uh, you know, Lethal Weapon 2 era. Yeah, right. And then actually, you're going to laugh. I think we probably have some crossover here. I picked Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> I picked Sylvester Stallone because Dolph, I mean, come on. Yeah, there's um, a resemblance there. And I was thinking kind of like when he did that movie Cobra, you know, where he's like the same awesome. thing. I yeah. literally put that. I was like, Cobra. Yeah. Like that's the Punisher look right there. It's the Punisher so, look. Right. And it was like the same thing. I feel like the closest thing we'll ever get to seeing uh, Sylvester Stallone as the Punisher is him and Cobra. Yeah. Because it's very similar to... You know, the Punisher is Dolph's Cobra, basically. <laughs> it is. Uh, so, yeah, those are my three choices. Um, of those three, if I had to pick Gun to My Head, I think Michael Bean would probably be the best. Yeah. He'd be the best option. But um, I like them all. For the detective, for Lou Gossett Jr., uh, I picked Bill Duke from Predator and Commando. Mm. Hell yeah. Uh, he's a good character actor. I think he uh, he has an intensity. Like, he's kind of scary in Predator. Where you're like, oh, this guy's like, there's, there's something like edgy about him and dark and kind of creepy. Uh, so I think Bill Duke would have been like a good disturbed, like, yeah. you know, former alcoholic, you know, war buddy of, of the Punisher. Um, then I also picked uh, Telly Savalas. Telly Savalas was Kojak back in the day on the TV show. And uh, he was also in some Twilight Zone episodes, like the Talking Tina doll episode. Telly Savalas. And uh, then I also picked Keith David, who was from there's, the dad from There's Something About Mary, and they live. <laughs> yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah, Keith David, he was a good actor. Yeah, and um, good. I like Keith David. And then for a voice actor now. Is he? Mm-hmm. Fun fact. Okay. No matter what you got people to believe, I'm still the goddamn president. And then, how'd you get the Frank above the beans? <laughs> well, how the hell did you get the beans above the Frank? I mean, you, I'm, you're just, I'm, you're just, I. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, director I picked Paul Verhoeven the director of Robocop yeah. and I also picked as a runner up Paul Michael Glazer uh, who did Running Man and he was also Hutch from Starsky and Hutch and he was the actor and then for screenwriter I picked two I wanted to do a collab I picked Wendell Mays who did the original Death Wish mm. uh, he lived until 92 so he definitely could have penned this and then I want him to collaborate with Edward uh, Newmeyer I'm sorry Newmeyer who wrote RoboCop? Good choices. Thank you. Very Thank choices. you. I thought RoboCop had the perfect blend of like comic book goofiness and hardcore yeah. violence, like really hardcore. It violence. crossed my mind too for uh, yeah. RoboCop. So let's hear what you got, baby. Uh, Max, can you go to my little slide, please? I'm so sorry. You guys, um, I already know. Like this, we already said it. for Punisher, I did Sylvester Stallone as well, of course, because we said that for Cobra. That's mm-hmm. the only reason I saw that, and I actually did Kurt Russell as well, Max. So. Nice. He he came close. Yeah. He was on my list. I, I great choices. Um, for Detective Jake, you only did two. Damn. Yeah, I just did Danny Glover. Okay. The lethal Weapon. Danny Glover almost made my list, but it was between him and Carl Weathers. So I was like, but I thought, man, I'm already thinking of Stallone. Yeah. Carl Weathers. I almost did Mel Gibson for Punisher. And yeah. then I was like, oh, wait, I don't want to do Lethal Weapon, basically. Yeah. And Glover. Either. That's why I didn't do Carl Weathers, because I thought, well, it's going to be Rocky. Yeah. At this point. And Dolph's already in there. Yeah. Uh, director, I did Mark L. Lester, who directed Commando. Good choice. But he's He only directed like a couple of good movies, but Commando was just like... His best. best. Yeah. yeah. Over top action. That would have been perfect because that one had such hardcore action. Are you a Commando fan, Max? Uh, I have not seen it. With Schwarzenegger? I have not. Oh, my God. Well, we're after the, after we do the movies we love, we're adding Commando to the list. I have a whole list of movies. Oh, bro. Like, oh, Command- my God. You have not seen that? Oh, but I, that's when, like, actually, like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, Commando is... In that's, my, like, one of Arnold's... It's top... Yeah. One of the that's players. top... Yeah. That's, like, yeah. top five Arnie for me. I guess that's, like, top Arnold being Arnold. Yeah, that's, like... Yeah, that's like Arnold. Pre- that's like Predator era. That's like Running Man. That's like a little before Total yeah, Recall. But like, log and oh. a log on his shoulder. Yeah, basically. Jenny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going anywhere. You said you were through. I'm not 
going anywhere. Uh, yeah, good, good, good casting, boys. Yeah, it was really good. Um, yeah, so love this movie. We'll go back and watch it again. This might be like an annual watch for me now, oh, and uh, at, at least biannual. At least bisexual, but you know it was it was fun. Definitely, like thank you, Ben, for giving us a copy for this. Oh, of you know, course, I think it's a good one to own. Like, I was I'm I, glad that goes up on the shelf over here. Of course, yeah, I was a sweet boy, and I decided to get my boys hard copies of this because apparently it's hard to get. It's hard to get on Blu-ray, and uh, this is like a a custom special edition one. And I wanted my boys to have it in the. What's collection. really cool about this one too is that it has a reversible case. Yeah, which is pretty badass. Yeah show well viewers. you you bought me the blu-ray but uh i realized i don't have a blu-ray player mm. so if you do want to watch it online you can it's on youtube for free the uncut yeah. version yeah yeah it's all on youtube which is sick and that's actually where i watched it for the first time because someone was generous enough to post it in its entirety with the uh all the gore beautiful look at it i love that Old artwork. Comic book art right there does it have an yeah. artist name on there can we shout out the artist name it does not oh man he did a good job that's but good. if you want to see it for yourself just Look up the 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 all region Blu-ray of Punisher eighty nine, mm-hmm. but such good shit, so freaking good. Very cool. Hell yeah. Well, all right, you guys want to go into a little bit of entertainment news? Entertainment. Some entertainment news, boys. Let's do it. Let's do them rapid fire. Let's what you got Max. Let's now go. you see me. Three. Everything's a sequel. I thought there would be like now you don't. I thought that'd be like the next <sighs> sequel. Maybe yeah. that's what we called. I mean, uh, what was the second one called? I think just two. Now you see me too. I don't know if it was. Anything else on that? Now you see me, now you don't. Alakazam. Um, I enjoy those movies. I, th- I do too. I think they're fun. I like the first one more. Yeah. Uh, second one, Lost, was it Isla? Is it Isla? Fisher? Isla Fisher, yeah. He wasn't in the I love her. One. I think she was pregnant at the time. Whoops. And then we got... Uh, Should've worn a rubber. I forget her name. We replaced her, basically. But yeah. what's been... When was the last one? 2018? I want to say like 2016. Maybe, yeah, 2016? This has yeah. been years later. Yeah, we, and we still got some time. It comes out November 14th, 2025. Jeez. It's projected. So. Wow. Okay. But yeah, I, I like them. I don't think I ever saw the second one, to be honest. I think I just saw the first one. It's enjoyable. I think yeah. you'll like it. Okay. Yeah. I like I like magic. I like Great the magic tricks in there. Uh, great cast. I mean, you got Woody Harrell's. Jesse Eisenberg's a little underrated. Yeah. Yeah, I like Jesse Eisenberg. Um, Love Woody. Who else is in there? Morgan Freeman, Dave Franco. Morgan Freeman. Yeah, it's an all-star cast. I mean, you can't really go wrong with that. What do we got on Superman? Everyone's giving him shit about his costume, but you got to remember, these are all like leaks. Like, nothing is uh, official, official yet. I guess guess that picture was, but. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, uh, James Gunn's Superman includes a touching cameo in honor of Christopher Reeve. Yes, the cameo is, it is Christopher Reeve's son is playing a journalist. Sexy. Oh, nice. Which is really cool. Yeah, and it's awesome to have him in there. He looks just like him. I don't know if it's on this article or not, but yeah, I saw him on a rooftop. But um, I'm stoked for another Superman. I, I've said this before, and I'll say it again though. I, I'm excited for it. I'll go watch it. Very curious. But um, I think two super movies. Uh, sorry, two Superman movies. I would have liked to have seen, or I'd like to see them do. Is like, I really think we missed out on Superman Lives with Nick Cage. Yeah, but it's too late now. Yeah, it's like, like late. it's too. I mean, I'd still if if it happened, I'd fucking love it. But that was supposed to be like 1998, Nick Cage, Tim Burton. Like, that's the Superman movie I really wanted. Uh, and it almost happened, too. That's what's so frustrating. If you watch the documentary, The Death of Superman Lives, dude, I'd be down to do a whole episode on it if you guys want. and everything. Like, it was so close to happening. Ah, even if it wouldn't have been the best, like, I just wish we had it. I wish you'd go back and watch it. But, oh, well, whatever. Fuck it. Shit happens. Um, it's just, it's almost worse though when you get a tease, when it's like this tease of like, oh, it was three weeks away from production. You're like, ah. Oh, like sets were built, you know, and the Tim Burton. Superman. Yeah. I mean, we got to look at it in what the flash yeah. movie. And even Nick Cage it wasn't looks funky. Cage wasn't happy with that. No, he wasn't. Nick Cage. Well, if, if you like Superman movies, I would check out the animated series invincible mm-hmm. on Amazon. Oh, so it's sort of like a Superman universe, but it's super dark. Yeah. And he's just, there's so much gore and violence. If you're into that sort of thing, it's a okay, great job. Yeah. Great wow. cast in there, too. J.K. Simmons is in there. J.K. Simmons. Boondock Saints 3. I was going to say one more thing about Superman. Okay. Ah! I was going to say, if they did a Superman movie, which obviously they're doing another one, I, I wish they would do it in like the golden age of Superman. I think that's what they're doing. Where, 1930s? Well, it, it looks like it's 
so it has like the old look of the comic books mm-hmm. like, from the behind the scenes set, but like modernized in a way. Mm-hmm. So they're good. They're doing that like you know how a lot of Sky like Captain that. the World of Tomorrow vibe, like a Kinda futuristic yeah. Fallout type. But I don't like yeah. how like I'm already seeing random like other Justice League members in this movie. Yeah, I just, just want us ground. I just want a Superman movie. Can Give we? These villains. Can we also just have a fucking surprise for once in our lives? Yes. Like I haven't had a surprise in a movie since I was like 15. Like like the internet has ruined everything because like everyone's like oh. Easter egg, Easter egg. Like the movie comes out in fucking 2026. I am upset. And here's everyone who pops in, and I'm like, dude, just let us fucking see it. Like when it comes out. Yep. Big big surprises are freaking Deadpool and Wolverine. We already got a huge surprise that's coming out. Like people, they're gonna make money. It's already gonna make money. Yeah. Let's give them another Easter egg that was gonna be in the movie. Yeah. Quit with the Easter egg. Did you see what it is? I don't. Know Cyclops. I, no. Oh. You want to know? Sorry. I know. I don't. Okay, I won't tell you. I don't. Don't tell me. But don't watch any more clips. Okay, don't watch any more clips. clips. But it's just it's just frustrating. It's like frustrating. You can't you can't even like even if you go in opening weekend to watch a movie now, it doesn't mean shit because there's people who see previews and then they talk about it weeks in advance of these advanced screenings and they ruin all the surprises. So it's so you just spoon feed it to you now. I'm like, bro, let me go enjoy it. it. Like it's just because they want people in the theater. Like that's why. Like okay, let's show them what's gonna happen in the movie. But it's like, but I like the surprise. I mean, I get it. Audiences are dumb, but like, let's say there's three cameos right give me one say okay there's 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 pro- there's gonna be a cameo of cyclops or whatever and then that's it like let me let the other two be a fucking surprise that was one thing i enjoyed in um in the flash spoiler alert was the uh the way you say it. was <laughs> the spoiler alert, was the nick cage cameo like actually yeah that was cool that, i did not know that was coming and i was coming. super and excited Reeve in there as, as well and also spoiler alert george clooney that was that was a pleasant surprise i was like oh cool it would have been cool if it was Val Kilmer, but... Yeah, Val Kilmer would have been... <laughs> we know why he couldn't do that. Yeah, poor Val. But, sorry, continue with The Boondock Saints 3, another fucking sequel. Yeah, we're talking about Vigilantes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Although I do like The Boondocks. It. I do like The Boondocks. Yeah. Uh, Justice for All, under God. I love the first movie. First, first movie was... The re- great movie to watch on St. Paddy's Day. It, it was a damn good movie. Yeah. It was a damn good movie, yeah. I, that's one I have nothing bad to say about. I um, Bo in there. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, with his cross dressing. <laughs> yeah, that's a weird one. What the fuck? He was busy as heck in that era. That was like Spider Man 2, American Psycho, Boondock Saints. Like, he was like doing a bunch of shit, you know? Number two, uh, I, I, I still enjoyed it. I know a lot of people don't like it that much, but I still, it's good to see the brothers back on the screen. I didn't watch it. So, uh, Roy Duffy isn't involved. Really? No. He's not directing it? Nothing? No. He's going to re- be replaced by Timothy Chalamet. I don't know if I want to watch it, though. Just kidding. But Troy Duffy is writing a series of Boondock Saints books. Mm. Interesting. Mm. Fun times. I don't know if Reading. I'm happy about this. What's, what's going on with, uh, what's going on with Mel Gibson with the beard there? What was that? Oh, this uh, Monster Summer, Mel Gibson family horror film. Oh, oh, great. I'm down for that. I'm down for that. Did you see that new Mel Gibson movie coming out with Mark Wahlberg? I mean, he directed it, like his new directed movie. Mm, I don't think so. Yeah. Mark I, I thought I sent the trailer to you. Maybe you did. Uh, Mark Wahlberg has like a shaved head and he, like a psychopath and they're hijacking the plane. And it doesn't look like a doesn't look like a Mel Gibson movie. It looked like he's getting a paycheck. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking I'm about. I'm not really happy about it. It looked okay, but it, yeah, it looked like he didn't put the... It looks the, below him. He didn't put the heart and soul yeah. into it like Apocalypto mm-hmm. or, you know, freaking um, Braveheart, you know? Flight Risk? Flight yeah. Risk. Yeah. It looks okay. Like, it looks like one I'd watch, but it's not like... It's not... Yeah. Like, his movies usually go like, okay, he's going to be nominated for an Academy Award or something when he directs something. Yeah, this one's more like, all right, give me my money. Yep. Fuck you, pay me. Fuck you, pay me. What else we, we got? We really need a director. Who comes along? Yeah. Wow, that's a that was an odd choice. Yeah, hmm. <laughs> I like it's it. I, it's I like like why are you doing the power donut? You either go you either go full bald or <laughs> just he had like a hat and that was a big reveal when, in the trailer. <laughs> huh. And they're like Mark Wahlberg looks unrecognizable. I'm like, nah, that's still Mark Wahlberg. I like, recognize I can, him. Yeah. I could see him. He's super recognizable. Yeah, interesting. But there's hair up there. Yeah, the power donut. I don't I'm know. Confused. Yeah. Maybe it's a piece, you know. But Topher Grace is in it. Love Topher. I love Topher. It's good to see him in theater. We were robbed of not having a Topher Grace right. Venom trilogy. All anyway, right. what else we got? Is this the uh, Glory Hole Tree movie? <laughs> um, no. Why don't all those destinations come uh, out with five already? So you notice everything we've talked about has been a sequel, sequel so far, yeah. right? A lot of sequels. Since the beginning of... 
That's all we got. I, I, I like Final Destination movies. I love Final Destination. Everyone in our generation now is very careful when they see a log truck. Mm. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do. And if you're, uh, if the seat, if the seat in front of you, the, uh, tray table is broken, be careful. Yeah. yeah everything. Be careful. Like a, Death yeah. is coming for you. I messed up. No, he no, one that, to... As a kid, that was probably one of the scarier movies that I was allowed to see. I still think about it to this day and I get yeah. nervous. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, a meme. I watch them like yearly still. So. Yeah, they were, they were tremendous movies. I, I only saw one and two, and then I think I saw three, but I don't remember what. What were some of the three? Movies? Is the roller coaster one? Oh yeah, I saw uh, three. Yeah, three, so one, three's fun. Yeah, one, two, and three. I saw it. Yeah. So the director of Spider Man Homecoming, uh, Far From Home, and No Way Home, is directing. Okay. This movie. Is well, that's cool. Well, at least we'll get a Tobey Maguire appearance. I know the the writers pitched it to the the studios were pretty cool they literally did a final destination like hmm. theme like they died on like their zoom call it was all pre-recorded and oh sick so that was pretty cool like how they pitched it that, that is coming i'm sorry the director of spider-man wrote it but mm. the uh the the director of the kim possible live action movie <laughs> is directing it okay. with uh zach lipovsky are you joking or is this no i swear to god it says right wow well yeah. they're uh they're branching out interesting i'll give them that they're branching out and who knows maybe it'll be like a miley cyrus twerking situation where it's like they really want to they really want to prove that they're not part of that disney world anymore you know they want to be that's true intense. what was that movie that we watched the director did a lot of disney movies oh the uh, sorority row oh, yeah. house on sorority Row, something like that who knows and then he went on to do hillary duff movies yeah yeah Let's be the complete opposite, though. Yeah. Werewolves. And this is just kind of a... Uh, i not sure what this the best is best werewolf movies of all time. I think there's like five of them in here, right? I didn't like wolf. that. I didn't like Wolf that I much. I never saw it. I love Jack, but it was kind of dumb. Is it? <laughs> I own it if you want to borrow it, but it... Uh, it maybe I'll watch. Maybe I'll watch it again, but it just... I don't know. It didn't It didn't resonate with me. But I love Jack. Yeah. I love Jack. It looks... Yeah, it looks fun. fun. It looks... In there. The it sacrifice. Uh, it was something. <laughs> It was something. Oh, what is that? Silver one? Bullet. Never seen, seen it. Never seen it. Never seen that, 1985 that, that is probably a good one for us. That might be one to add to the cult classic list. Yeah. Cutting the cult. Um, I want to watch more werewolf movies. I'm going to say my favorites before we finish. Uh, Dog Soldiers, one of my oh, all-time favorites. Yeah. And then American Werewolf in London. Mm. And, of course, the original Wolfman. Yeah. I, I like uh, I mean, American Werewolf in London also. And then I'm, I'm a... I love the Underworld movies. You got vampires. They're great in there. Yeah, I got nothing so against the Underworld ones, uh, especially the I think it's the third movie, Rise of Lycan. So it's strictly basically werewolf. So it's pretty fun. I really liken them. My ex girlfriend's favorite werewolf movie was Twilight. Oh really? Well, I see why you broke up with her. <laughs> <laughs> Silver. I already looked at that. Yeah. What is this? Monster Squad. Monster Squad. I like Monster Squad. Never I want to. I want to consider it a werewolf movie though. Never seen it. It's more of a monster. Um, I have it. It's, it's up there somewhere. Okay. It's a. It's a good one with a you know for kids in the eighties discovering. Okay. Is the Monster thing. Mash in the soundtrack? Better be. I don't, I don't think so. Werewolf classic. of London. Classic. Oh, super classic. And then what's the? So it's not an American Werewolf in London. That one's just Werewolf in London, right? Yeah. Oh, never. No, not familiar with that. Oh, it's the. Old. I'm familiar with the John Landis 80s one, not the black and white one. Interesting. I guess we will have to watch that. Oh. 1935. I feel like they're just trying to be cool at this point. So the werewolf zeitgeist has been around for quite some time. Mm-hmm. Mm. And then, of course, the classic. Come on. The I, used to, I used to be a big Wolfman guy when I was a kid. Love the Wolfman. I loved him. Um, and then I, I've been slightly turning into like Frankenstein more. Like you were Frankenstein? Yeah. If I had to pick my top favorites, I would say The Mummy is my favorite. Then I would say Wolfman. Then I would say Gilman. Is, but I like them all in their own way, though. Like, I love the Invisible Man. I was going to say you like the Invisible Man. Mummy's, yeah. like, probably top. Yeah. Then I like Frankie, though, sometimes. I like, you know. I'd I say, like the movies. I like going, like, the old ones. Like, yeah. There's so many Frankenstein movies, and it's just yeah. fun to watch. Who are you? More of a Wolfman? Are you more of a Wolfman guy or more of a Mummy guy, Max? Um, I like uh, Buffy the Vampire. Somewhere. I love Buffy. Yeah. I can't go wrong with that. Sarah Michelle Geller stole my heart. Stole. I just I vampires seem more like realistic because there are yeah have you seen in the shadows I think that's what it's what called. we do in the shadows what we do in the shadows hilarious oh, okay. I love like the energy vampire because yeah. I we worked we all worked in a corporate setting together and oh yeah this shit is real man or energy vampire this is my office also known as the hunting ground it is real there are energy vampires everywhere Nancy Pelosi's a vampire <laughs> absolutely <laughs> yeah. 
She, uh, yeah. Um, how about Teen Wolf? Teen Wolf. Oh, there we go. American Werewolf in London. American Wolf. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I, oh, that, that's Dog Soldiers. I think. I feel like was this top five? Oh, it's bad. I think we're on like number seven. There's three going. And I don't know how many there is. Bad Moon. I'm shocked. Dog, Dog Soldiers hasn't appeared. I haven't seen any of these. Oh, there like, it is. There it is. It's on there. Dog Soldiers. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. I have to rewatch that. I remember putting it in. Uh, it's so good. I have just a DVD of it. I want it on Blu-ray. I saw it when I was a kid, and it scared the shit out of me. Like that was a movie. Like I remember, like genuinely frightened me. Like it was so good. Maybe the most crowd-pleasing werewolf movie ever made. Yeah, it was really. And what I love about it is, like, from what I remember, the guys went into like a reconnaissance mission in the military, like British guys, and their guns had blanks. That was the thing, like, because really? they they're doing like a tra- <laughs> they're like doing a training mission. And maybe I'm maybe it's been a while since I've seen it, but I thought that was so clever. I was like, oh wow. So they they say here it's a predator and Night of the Living Dead fucked and had a baby. You'd get dog soldiers. Is that actually what it says? No, it says it's a blend of them. But I, I do like yeah. Joe Blow. Look at Joe Blow really blowing up. That's what I'd like. No expectations to be eventually is like we have different. Um, I don't know. I, I guess maybe we don't need to do articles, but. Never mind. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. What? I don't know. Oh, Joe Blow. Joe yeah. Blow. It's yeah. a website. Let Joe Blow do their thing. We'll just keep doing podcasts. Ginger Snaps. Don't want to give us never quick seen extra work. Ginger Snaps. Ginger Snaps. No. I heard. I think they made like two of them. Or I've never even heard of it. I've Some... heard they're good, but I've never watched them. I don't know anything. Re- I don't know anything about it. Man, nah. I think it's a. I think it's okay. one of the cult classics. Yeah. Oh, Dory. Oh, maybe. Things. Maybe. Same huh? with Heathers. I've never seen Heathers. I've never seen Heathers either. I need to watch it because it's uh, written by Quentin Tarantino. Interesting. Yeah. No, he, no he... wait. Is that? That's no, not Heathers. No. Never mind. You're thinking True Romance. True Romance. Yeah. Yeah. Never seen Heathers either. Both oh. those movies I've never seen. So. Adam to our list. Yeah. Maybe we should have another category on the wheel <laughs> of movies we've never seen that we really want to see, but surprisingly okay. haven't seen. So we wanted to narrow it down this week. So we just picked some of our favorite movies of all time. Yeah, mm-hmm. movies from our you know from our past that just we can't forget. Yeah, this category is movies we love. Movies we love, and we're gonna and alternate it. Love too. Yeah, and we're gonna alternate it each week. It's like sometimes we do cutting the cult, sometimes we go to the movies, sometimes we do movies we love. This week, movies we love. So three choices from each one of us. Max, let's see what we get. Let's spin the wheel. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, Air Hair Hair. All right. Winner. Did we get James's pick, which we are all fans of? Yes. Um, Max, you've seen it, right? Airheads? Oh, oh you haven't I seen think it? we talked about this on the podcast. Masterpiece, bro. So it's, uh, go ahead, take us off, James. It's Steve Buscemi, Brendan uh, Fraser, mm-hmm. and um, oh. Adam Sandler. Yep. Uh, oh. There's a little cameo of Chris Farley in there as well, right? Yep, yeah. Chris I Farley did in... see this on cable TV, like an edited version. It's yeah. so good. It was good. on TV. Quite I watched this movie a lot when I was a kid. I think I borrowed it from uh, Ben. Uh, oh, really? First time I've seen it, I think I borrowed it from you. And then I went out and bought my own copy of it. Yeah, this, this is one I watched. Pip, I remember is the Adam Sandler name. Oh, Pip. wow, some rockers. The Lone Rangers. Yeah, so basically. They take over a news station, right? Uh, radio station. Radio station. Radio station. Yeah, so, so they, they're a band and they want to get their music played and they get pissed off. And they go and hold a radio station hostage. And it's so much fun. It's exactly what you'd expect. And it's so weird. More people don't talk about this movie because the cast is like everyone became famous in that cast. And this was like prime, like SNL Sandler, Brendan Fraser, but like post Encino man. Um, Steve Buscemi was just like finding his way, just like getting popular as a character actor. This would have been around the time he did big Lebowski, like a little before that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, just a great, great movie. So I am super stoked to watch this. I haven't watched it all the way through and probably... It's been a while for me. I want to say 10 plus years. Yeah, it's been... Easy. 10 plus, okay. Easy, yeah. Maybe probably 10. Actually, you know what? Yeah, mine's probably yeah. 10 years as well. Yeah, so I'm super stoked for this one. Cool, cool, cool. It'll be fun. Well, it's fun. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right, guys, any closing thoughts? Um. Yeah, guys, just continuously, you know, just like, um, subscribe, hit that notification bell. <laughs> Um, I watched our previous videos. There's there's a big catalog, like Ben always says back there, and there are you know older movies, newer movies. You know, just oh yeah, we'll watch and let's see if you guys uh, have any uh, suggestions as well. Leave a comment. We yeah, got some juicy ones. If we get enough uh, crowd involvement, I'd love if if you guys could put in your favorite movies in the comments, and we can choose from something that that you're a fan of, and we'll, maybe just broaden our horizons. We'll, yeah, we'll probably laugh at them. We'll let you put your suggestion there and we'll, we'll shit all over them. No, no, we won't do that. All right. Well, I love you guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, be kind. Rewind. And subscribe. Thanks Thank for watching. watching. guys.
Goodbye. Goodbye. The Lone Rangers. All right, and by the way, for those eagle eye viewers who are waiting for us to review Gotti, uh, we just didn't want to. It looked like a piece of crap. Yeah. So, so we didn't. We skipped it. We went right to the Punisher. Yeah, look for a John Travolta movie. Watch the Punisher with Tom Shane. Yeah, or watch uh, Saturday Night Fever. Yeah. Or literally anything else. Or Michael. Michael, yeah. We're, we're going to, we, we used to review a lot of like really shitty movies <laughs> and uh, torture ourselves for you, but we're kind of over that. So we're yeah. going to watch really good movies from here on out. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I mean, maybe a bad movie here and there. Once in a while, some will slip in, but we're going to try to avoid punishing ourselves. <laughs> punishing. Uh, as much as we can. Yeah, yeah. agreed. So, Gotti, uh, if you want to watch it, go ahead, but we're not going yeah, to. We're... Sorry.